Now, there's two basic methods that they've taught you. Okay. One is substitution, and the other is elimination. Do those words ring a bell? Yeah. Let's talk about substitution. If I have one equation that says that, and I have another equation that says this, then that lends itself to substitution. The reason being is that one of the equations is fully defined in terms of one variable, this one. Mm -hmm. So it's really easy to solve this by substitution. In other words, I'm going to go, that's equation one. I'm going to go to equation two, and wherever I see x, I'm going to substitute y plus two. So it would be three times y plus two minus y equals four. And now I have one equation and only one variable. And I can solve that. Solve that for me. Uh, so it would be 3y plus 6 minus y equals 4. Okay. Um, so then subtract 6 and be 2y equals negative 2. So y equals negative 1. All right. So that's checking up on your algebra skills. Um, all right. So let's do 1 by elimination. Now... In other words, if you look at number 37, whoops, number 37 um, is in standard format, both equations. And by that, I mean you have some number of x and some number of y, both on the left side of the equation, and you have a constant on the other side. That's standard format, and that almost always may, is easier to solve by elimination. And notice that neither equation is solved for one variable. Mm -hmm. So elimination is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you're trying to eliminate one variable. And then you'll have one equation and one variable only, and you'll be able to solve it. Now, mm -hmm. the rules of algebra are such that you can add any two equations, and you can subtract any two equations. Well, if I add or subtract, I don't eliminate a variable here. Okay. But, you can always multiply both sides of any equation by the same number. Okay? So, let's multiply equation 1 by 3. So, I'm going to multiply the left side by 3, and I'm going to multiply the right side by 3. And I'm going to rewrite it. That makes it 9x minus 6y equals 3. Now, equation 2, I'm going to multiply by negative 2, both sides. And that turns equation 2 into minus 10x plus 6y equals minus 6. Now I have it in perfect format such that if I add the two equations together, y goes away. In other words, mm -hmm. I eliminate y. And let's do it. And what do you get when you add those two equations? Um, it would be negative x equals negative 3. So x would equal 3. Yeah. And then you still have to go back and solve for y. And the best way to solve for y is to go back to one of the original equations and pick the simplest one. Well, before I multiplied it by 3, that was my equation, 1. Okay? And equation 1 is simpler than equation 2 merely 
if for no other reason than it's got smaller numbers. Whoops. <laughs> and so go back to equation one. Substitute three for X. So now you have nine minus two Y equals one. Subtract nine from both sides. Yeah, minus two Y equals minus eight. Y equals four. So you end up solving for both variables. But that's always what happens when you're solving by elimination is mm -hmm. that you solve for you eliminate a variable now this was a particularly difficult problem i'm not real pleased that they started out with a problem this hard uh, usually when they're starting off teaching you this they make it relatively simple to eliminate a variable it's pretty unusual that I had to multiply both equations by a number. In other words, and, and this is what I did. I looked at those two, and I basically tried to find kind of a common denominator. Well, the common denominator is 6, right? Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I got to multiply the top by 3 to turn this into 6y, and the bottom by 2 to turn that into 6y. And that's okay. about as tough as you're going to see uh, as far as two equations and two unknowns where you actually have to manipulate both equations. Notice that this equation one is exactly the same as the original equation one. It's just been multiplied by three on both sides. Same with two. So all I did is turn it into an equation that I can work with a little bit easier. In other words, an equation where I can eliminate a variable. Okay. Now, 38. Solving three equations and three unknowns by using elimination is very complicated. I, I'm going to go through it real quick. Do you know how to do it by chance? Would it be like the same as the first one, but um, just with... Well, there's, there's a very specific method that I use. Okay. And that is to pick a variable that we want to eliminate and create an equation for, and then eliminate the same variable by using two other equations, and do whatever you have to do to eliminate that variable. Okay, yeah. And that makes equation five. So I'm going to take equation one, equation two, and equation three, and find a variable to eliminate such that I have an equation 4 and 5 that have the same two variables. And then I'll have a system of two equations and two variables, and we just saw how to solve that. And once you solve for one variable, then you can go back and solve for the other two. Now, again, they didn't make this very easy. Um, it's easy to eliminate Z. Okay. Notice, I can add yeah. equation 1 to equation 3, and Z is going to go away. Yep. But then, eliminating Z by using either 1 and 2, or 2 and 3, is not going to be particularly easy. Um... So you always look for the variable to eliminate that's going to be the easiest arithmetic. Um, I actually think it would be easier to eliminate x. I don't mm -hmm. have to deal with as big a numbers. In other words, if I eliminate z, the first step is really easy. 
But then the next step, the common denominator between 3 and 13 is 39. So I would have to multiply that equation by 13 and this one by 3. You know what? That might be the easiest thing. Let's, let's, do, let's eliminate Z. Okay. Merely because the very first step is really easy. Okay, so down here, I'm going to write equation number four. Add one to three. That's our equation number four. Um, so the three X minus three Y equals 15. Okay. Now I need an equation 5 that's also missing z. It doesn't do any good to come up with an equation 5 that's missing x or y, because then I would have still three variables and two equations. So I've got to end up with the same two variables in both of these equations. So I've got to eliminate z. Well, as I said, I've got to use either 1 and 2 or 2 and 3. Let's use 1 and 2. Only because 1 has really small numbers. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite 1. Common denominator between 3z and 13z is 39. So if I multiply equation 1 by 13, I'll turn this into 39z. And if I multiply equation 2 by 3, I'll turn this into 39z. Okay? okay. I would prefer one of them be negative so that I can end up adding the two equations. So let's start off by multiplying equation 1 by minus 13. So that gives me minus 13x minus 52y minus 39z equals 0. One of the reasons I chose equation 1 is because it had 0. I wouldn't have to multiply 0. In other words, 0 times anything is 0. Yeah. Now, equation 2 I can multiply it by 3, both sides, and end up with a positive 39z. So 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times 23y is plus 69y. That's plus 39z. And 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. Now, we're in a position to create our equation 5. So, add the new 1 and 2 together. What do you get? Uh, 2x plus 3y. 17. 69, 17. Yeah, 69 minus 52 is 17. Yeah. Um, the z equals... away. I'm adding the two numbers, so I get minus 9. Okay. Now, we've got those two equations, two unknowns. I can use exactly the same process that I did in problem 37 to solve this system. Okay. I don't know that it, we should spend the next 12 minutes doing it. The one okay. thing about three equations and three unknowns is that it's very lengthy to do, as you can see. And we haven't, we haven't even fully done it yet. But mm -hmm. what we're going to do is solve for x or y, and it looks like the easiest variable to eliminate would be the x. Still have to multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 3 in order to get the x's to be eliminated. But then I'm going to have just y's 
equals some number, I'll be able to solve for y. I then can go back into one of these two equations, solve for x. And then when I have x and y, I can go back into the simplest equation, that first one, substitute my known values for x and y, and solve for z. And that's the way you do all of these three equations and three unknowns. Okay. The key is to create an equation four and five that are both missing the same third variable. That's the key. Once you do that, the rest of it's easy. I'd say we should go on just because I don't want to bore you to tears. Mm -hmm with three equations and three unknowns. And you can imagine that four equations and four unknowns would be even worse. Four yeah. equations and four unknowns, you got to eliminate a variable, then you got three, you eliminate another variable, you got two, and it's like a half hour problem. Mm -hmm. Let's look at 39. All right, 39 is a word problem that we're going to have to create some equations and solve them. And mm -hmm. it looks like we're only going to have to create two equations. Okay. The first thing you should always do with word problems are figure out what your variables are. Okay. And you can always answer that question by reading the last sentence. They want to know what is highway miles per gallon were and what is local miles per gallon are. So let's let X be his highway miles per gallon. And let's let Y be his local miles per gallon. And I really believe strongly in spelling these out. In other words, I didn't spell out all the words, but you know what it means, highway and local. Yeah. Okay. Well, now that you have that, we should be able to write some equations. Okay. Well, if he drove 100 miles... times miles per gallon on the highway, that shows you how much gallons of gas he used. In other words, let's say you get 20 miles per gallon. That's what X is. His highway miles per gallon are 20. Well, then, ah, it's not multiplied by X, it's divided by X. Notice how that gives you the number of gallons used driving on the highway. If you drive 100 miles and you get 20 miles per gallon, then you're going to use 5 gallons. Okay? Okay, yeah. Plus 150 miles in town divided by Y is the number of gallons he's going to use driving in town. Okay. And they're telling us that all of that's equal to 18.2. Yeah. So there's one equation. But always know this, that if you have more variables than you have equations, you can't solve it. It's got an infinite number of solutions. So this equation alone is not going to let me solve it. But they gave us the next week. The next week he drove 180 miles on the freeway. Well, I'm still going to divide that by X. That's how many gallons he used on the freeway. Plus 
30 miles in town divided by Y, number of gallons he used in town, and all of that was equal to 10.9. Now, we, we have two equations and two unknowns, so we're going to be able to solve it for X and Y. Now, let's see. This one's a little tougher to solve because your variables are in the denominator. In other words, I'm not going to be able to add. Let me think of the best way to solve this. This is quite unusual. Uh, could you do it with the 150 and 30? Well, I'm thinking the, the best way to solve it, what, how did you think we're going to solve it? Uh, multiplying 30 by something to get it to 150. Five, that would work. Five, okay. And I could add the two. Yeah, let's try that. That, that should work good. In other words, this is equation one. This is equation two, and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation. I'm going to multiply it by minus five in order for us to be able to add the resultant two equations and eliminate a variable. It's better if one of them's minus and the other one's plus. So mm -hmm. new equation two is minus 900 over X minus 150 over y equals minus 54.5. Okay, that's my new equation two. A lot of times the toughest thing with these is you end up with equations all over your page. That's why I number them. And when I've changed one, I generally draw a line through it, cross it out, so that I know which two equations I'm really looking at now. Now add one to two. What do you get? Uh, it would be negative 800 over x. Equal, let's see, negative 54. 36.3. Yeah. Now it's relatively easy to solve for x. In other words, I can multiply both sides by x to get the x there. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 36.3, or negative. So I got negative 800 divided by negative 36.3, and that's equal to x. And again, let's not bog ourselves down in the arithmetic. It's not like you have to turn these answers in, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, we're going to get to a certain stage in these problems, and I'm going to say, let's go on to the next. However, if I ever say that, and you're not sure what to do next, let me know. Okay. Okay. You can certainly solve for X, right, with your calculator? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then go back into any of the previous equations, substitute for x, which you solved for, then solve for y, using pretty much a similar thing. You're going to subtract or put this number on the other side and then multiply both sides by y and so forth and so on. Okay. Okay. Um, have a look at what's coming up. Yeah, that's going to be a good place for us to stop. Um, All right. Just because the distance formula is completely different. Uh, okay. Well, by that, I mean it's not about solving simultaneous systems of equations. Um, in fact, I'm... Uh, I, I had my doubts as to whether we should even do this one that had three variables and three equations, merely because it was so long, and 
you might get one of those on your MPE test. At best, one out of 120 questions. So I don't know that it's worth spending as much time as we spent on it. Okay. Um, that's just, as we go through this, if I see other questions like that, I might bypass them and then we'll come back to them. After we've done what I okay. consider the more important ones. All right. Not that that's not important, it's just extremely difficult and time consuming. Yeah. But anyway. All right, Madison, I will talk to you next time. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.